On 18 June 2011, a convoy of MATVs was attempting to ford the Helmand River in RC South, Afghanistan. The platoon leader, platoon sergeant, and a staff sergeant dismounted their vehicles to discuss their plan to cross the river. It was decided that the platoon sergeant and his vehicle would cross the river first. Shortly after entering the river, the MATV became buoyant and rolled several times before coming to rest in seven feet of water. After several minutes of failed rescue tow attempts, another soldier with previous lifeguard training was granted permission to swim from the shoreline to the submerged vehicle in an attempt to rescue any surviving occupants. He was successful in saving the soldier from the driver's side rear seat, but unfortunately, the other four crew members drowned. A river crossing is a special operation in that it requires specific procedures for success because the water obstacle prevents normal ground maneuver. It demands more detailed planning and technical support than normal tactical operations, whether it is a river, lake, or a canal. A detailed assessment is vital to mitigate risk associated with all water crossing operations. The depth and width of the wet gap, bank conditions, and the current velocity all contribute to the decision for a maneuver force to ford a water obstacle. When selecting a fording site, the depth of the water is the most significant factor. Water depth at a particular crossing site may vary due to bottom surface mud or irregularities such as boulders or potholes. Wheeled vehicles have different fording capabilities with respect to water depth which can be found in your vehicle's technical manuals along with required vehicle preparations. If the depth of the water cannot be determined, a soldier with strong swimming skills may be required to cross the gap. This soldier would ensure the bottom is uniform, firm, and free of obstacles in a lane four meters wide that spans the wet gap. A long pole such as a mortar aiming stake or an engineer picket is useful in identifying depth and locating obstacles. In the event a soldier is utilized to determine bottom conditions, it is recommended that he wear a personal flotation device and be attached to a stationary object with a tending line. Personal flotation devices, or PFDs, are not part of the MATV or MRAP BII. PFDs should be considered in mission planning for any fording operation. If time and resources are available, run a safety line 100 meters downstream that crosses the wet gap. If operating in non-permissive or semi-permissive environments, overwatching units must be in position to engage the most likely enemy positions in the vicinity of the fording site. Rivers may be subject to sudden floods due to heavy rain or thawing upstream. This will cause bank overflow, faster currents, deeper water, and significant floating debris. It is imperative that reconnaissance of a fording site during planning is conducted when the weather conditions are the same as when the fording operation will take place. In general, river currents less than five feet per second are desired. One method for measuring water velocities is to establish a marked distance parallel to the water crossing and time the debris as it travels the distance. Empty water bottles are an excellent resource likely available to the operators. Measure out 100 feet and time how long it takes the debris to travel the 100 feet. 100 feet divided by 20 seconds equals 5 feet per second. Anything faster than 20 seconds would be faster than 5 feet per second and is not ideal. Immediately prior to fording, vehicles should Unlock combat door locks. Check security of load plan. 
open top egress hatches. Consider turning on filtered dome lights. Eliminate or have all vehicle occupants acknowledge escape route obstructions. MATV operators should turn off the radiator fan by engaging fan forward switch prior to entering water. Vehicle two. Test vehicle communication one. with vehicle secondary two. observer vehicle. Check that door handles operate properly and are lubricated and free of sand and grit. Verify the water depth does not exceed the vehicle's fording capability. And mark maximum water depth. If vehicles are equipped with winches, connect a winch from secondary vehicle to the fording vehicle to assist in an emergency situation. This can also provide assistance for crossing of the second vehicle. Ensure you know the specific winch payout length for your vehicle. The distance of the area to be crossed must not exceed this length. The winch payout length on the MATV is 75 feet. Supporting vehicles should be assigned to act as observers from a secondary vehicle. If an observer notes that the fording vehicle has surpassed the maximum fording depth, the fording vehicle will be instructed to stop and reverse out of the fording site. Vehicles should enter the water slowly to avoid creating a wake which can enter the engine's intake system. Vehicles should also maintain a constant speed of no more than 5 miles per hour. If obstacles are encountered during the fording, do not proceed. Exit water slowly and perpendicular to the bank. Avoid spinning wheels to prevent causing a rut for follow-on vehicles. As the vehicle exits the water, apply light pressure to the brakes to dry the brake linings. After the vehicle exits, establish far side security as determined in pre-mission planning or unit standard operating procedures. You have now conducted hasty shallow water fording successfully. Congratulations on a job well done.